This morning on Today's Woman, so-called stiletto stoners, educated, career-minded women who regularly smoke marijuana. The topic is highlighted in a recent article in Marie Claire, and here is one woman's story we should point out that she asked us to disguise her identity. I am a book editor. I've worked in publishing for several years now. I often smoke pot when I get home from work. The stereotypical pothead depicted by Hollywood. This is it, man. This is what your grandchildren are going to be smoking. The jobless, loveless slacker. This weed is fantastic. Is not the only type of person getting stoned. Educated, career-minded, successful women like this 30-something admitted pot smoker are also lighting up. I look at it as just sort of a way to unwind and just relax and sort of decompress. According to a recent study, 8 million women in America smoke marijuana in the past year. For me, it's the equivalent of having a glass of wine at the end of a long day. An illegal habit she's keeping private. At my current job, no one knows that I smoke. My family does know. It's obviously not something that they're super happy about. But on the other hand, I have a career. In one month, she'll spend roughly two or $300 for approximately half an ounce. And even though it's against the law, she's neither worried about getting caught nor becoming addicted. I don't walk down the sidewalk blazing joints. I don't sit in the park next to moms with kids and smoke. I, I'm not worried about addiction. I feel like I'm more addicted to coffee than anything else. And I'm sure millions of people can say the same. The changing face of pot smokers. But you're so smart and so together and so organized and you're always on time. And I'm like, yes, I am all of those things. And I do smoke pot. It's not impossible. Joanna Coles is the editor-in-chief of Marie Claire. Dr. Julie Holland is a psychiatrist at the New York University School of Medicine and the author of Weekends at Bellevue, nine years on the night shift at the Psych ER. Good morning to both of you. Nice morning, to see Mark. you. Good How morning. this hit your radar? Well, really, we were hearing from a lot of readers that they were feeling very stressed. I mean, clearly the economy is a, a great source of stress for people, and they wanted a way to unwind. And they found more and more of them were doing this, and they found it had less impact on them when they were going to work the next morning. So they didn't want to drink. Uh, it's cheap. And they felt they could do it in the privacy of their own home, and it was a very effective way to come down. That 8 million number you, we, we quoted in the piece, that does not include teenagers who are experimenting with marijuana. You're talking about the 18 to 49-year-olds. We're talking about highly functioning women who, you, you know, these are not people who are lying on park benches, the typical picture of someone who's addicted to drugs. They're casual, recreational users who find it very effective. Th this comment that we just heard in the piece where it's, it's just, I use it instead of having a glass of wine after work. How do you feel about that? Is it the same thing? Other than the fact that it's illegal. Well, the fact that it's illegal is a very big deal. You know, people have to hide and they feel like criminals and there's a lot of shame and guilt. It ends up making, uh, you know, it decreases self-esteem a little bit and it makes it more adrenalized. You know, the fact that you add adrenaline into it that you have to hide and there's shame actually can make it feel more addictive. It can make it more dangerous. Yeah, yeah, so I have to say that's not what we're hearing from readers. I mean, first of all, it's decriminalized in 13 states. And I don't think this is a generation of people who get excited about the fact it's illegal. I think they tried it in in college and they're going back to something because these are times of real stress and I don't think they're excited by the fact it's illegal and honestly it's not very difficult to get that's the other thing right. well, one, we would talk to people who had dealers in their offices one woman in your piece said that it's like her bubble bath uh, right. and but but it, when you make comments like that and I think what I was getting at with you doctor when you say equate it to a glass of wine are you ignoring a darker side of this issue well, it is a drug, like alcohol is a drug, or like coffee, caffeine, cigarettes. So um, it's just it's very different than alcohol. It's a it's more of a mind drug. I feel alcohol is sort of a, a deadening, numbing, more maybe like more like a body drug. So people are unwinding and they're relaxing, but they're also able to think and maybe analyze or think clearly, pull back and see the macro, maybe make some changes in their lives. I think that that cannabis really is more of a psychotherapeutic drug. It could actually be more helpful than alcohol, certainly in terms of insomnia or depression, anxiety. 
it can potentially be a treatment or a medicine. And, and Joanna, post publication of this article, is the feedback from the viewers changing at all? Well, the feedback from our readers is really that they're very pleased that they recognize themselves. I mean, it's not a piece condoning it. It's a piece saying, look, this is going on. How do we feel about it? And a lot of people have written in saying, you know what, I do this too, and I'm really glad you've shone a light on it because I need to know other people are doing it. That's absolutely what I'm hearing. And I think the, the behavior probably needs to be normalized. I think, you know, the countries that are regulated, they've got less use, not more. All right. Dr. Joanna, thanks very much. Appreciate it.